राधे राधे एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू द डेली विस्टम फ्रॉम भगवत गीता सेशन एंड हैंड ओवर टू यू नितिन जी राधे राधे थैंक यू संध्या थैंक यू विजय जी फॉर अ वंडरफुल सेशन राधे राधे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन होप यू हैड अ ग्रेट वीकेंड एंड एक्साइटेड टू बी बैक आई श्योर एम सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड वी वी वर ऑन श्लोका फोर डॉट टू सिक्स एंड टूडे वी विल गो अंडर द हुड ऑन वॉट आर द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ यज्ञास वी टच अपॉन इट ब्रीफली द अदर डे we'll try to go little deeper today and then see which which kind of yagya are we ready for assuming we are ready for agya yagya or we are trying to be ready for yagya so let's get started um, i'm going to share my screen and then we'll get started with the session good morning good evening again once again everyone Some serial is playing. I think if we can mute that. All right, great. Okay, Are you see my screen. It's going to come, I guess, soon. Is it coming? Screen or not yet? Yeah, it came. Okay, this mode I needed it in. All right, so let's get started with our opening prayers by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव ईश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणुरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु राइट राधे राधे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग अगेन लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड हियर ऑन चैप्टर फोर वर्स ट्वेंटी सिक्स we started it next last week uh today we will try to go a little more deeper 25th rather deva me vapare yagyam yogina paryupasate brahma agna vapare yagyam yagyane vopajupati All right. Do we have any volunteers who want to follow along? Shamji. Radhe Radhe Shamji. Radhe Radhe Shamji. Radhe Radhe. Deva me va pare yagyam yogi na pariyupasate Brahma agne va pare yagyam yagya ne va pajuvati. राधे 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 सुमेश जी राधे 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 सुमेश जी या प्लीज कॉल राधे राधे देव मेवा परे यज्ञम योगी न परयुपासते ब्रह्माग्नाव परे यज्ञम यज्ञे नैवो पजुवति राधे राधे नहीं नहीं सुमेश जी राधे राधे वंडरफुल योगिनापयुपासते ब्रह्मापरे यज्ञ 
Juvati. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Pahal Ji. Okay, do we have any more hands? Yes, uh, Rahul Ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Rahul. Radhe Radhe. Dev Meva Pare Yagyam Yogina Pagyupasate Brahma Gnava Pare Yagyam Yagya Nevo Pajuvati Rahul, Radhe Radhe. Ashutoshi, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Ashutoshi. Deva Meva Pare Yagyam Yogina Pariyupasate Brahma Gnava Pare Yagyam Yagya Nevo Pajuvati Wonderful, Ashutoshi. Radhe Radhe, thank you. All right, we have three more hands. Four more hands. Riya ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Riya ji. Radhe Radhe. Daivam eva pari yagnam yogina par yupasate Brahma gnava pari yagnam yagni naivo pajuvati Radhe Radhe. Shriya ji, Radhe Radhe. Shruti ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Shruti. Radhe Radhe Sandhya, Radhe Radhe Nanta. Dev meva yogina paryupasate. Dhamma nav pareyagyam yagya nevo pajupati. Very nice, Shruti. All right. Yeah, three more action. Now the fans is increasing. All right, let's let's pick up. We have a few minutes. Yeah, Rinalji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Nitinji, Radhe Radhe. Daiva meva pare yadnyam yogina paryupasate Brahma gnava pare yadnyam yadne naivo pajuvati so for your information, Miralji, in case you missed it, we are back with Kahoot. So you can get Prajne, Santoshi, everybody who are quiz lovers back every alternate Friday. We will be doing that now. So okay. Kavita ji, Radhe Radhe. All right, Kavita ji. Radhe Radhe ji, thank you. Daiva meva pare jam. Yogina hapari yo pasate. Brahma gnava pari ye jim. Yegne naivo pajuvati. Very nice, Kavita ji. Where are you joining us from? Dhanyavad. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. I think we've spoken <laughs> before. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the recitation. All right. I think we're down to our last three then. Anita ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Anita ji. Oh, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe Sandhya and uh, Nitinji. Daiva meva pare yagnam yogina par yupasate Brahma gnava pare yagnam yagni naivo pajuvati. Thank nice. you. Ji, Radhe Radhe, wonderful. Last two hands. Pragiji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Pragiji. Oh, yeah. Radhe Radhe. 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 Radhe very nice, Praviji. No worries. Radhe Radhe. All right. Last but not the least. Okay, oh. sir. Oh. I love Daiva meva pari agyam yogina pariyupasate brahma gnava pari agyam yagya naivo pajuvati. Wonderful, Sandhya. Very nice. So let's get started then. So short translation. Some yogis worship the celestial gods with material offerings unto them. So the buzzwords, you can make a mental note of it. 
celestial gods and material offerings. Okay, they have been clubbed together. Others worship perfectly who offer the self as sacrifice in the fire of the supreme truth. Okay, so let's get started. So today we are going to discuss this verse. Now, if you look at it, it's it starts with the discussion of the various yagyas. Okay, so the first section of this shloka, they, it talks about the transcendental knowledge about Krishna. The second section is basically explains how to apply that knowledge to life. And the third one that we are starting off with, it's now beginning, which explains how to get the transcendental knowledge. And it is through yagyas. So what are the categories or the gradation of yagyas is what we are going to look at today. Okay, so apparently there is a gradation or the levels of yagya, okay, which we are going to take a closer look at today. So did you know that? Okay, if you knew that, good. If you didn't, then today you will. Yagyas are sacrificed. There are different levels. And more importantly, which one are you ready for? Okay, so which one we think we are ready for uh, to make a spiritual progress. And we might already be performing one or a combination of a lot of these. So that is for uh, our own self to evaluate which Yagya we want to get associated with after looking at the pros and cons of all. Now let's get started. So there are different grades of the yagyas, like I spoke about. In this world, which is made up of matter, let's plot a graph now. Okay. So the yagya aspect is on the x-axis. Okay. The Intensity of yagya, of course, increases from left to right. And on the other hand, we are going to talk about the different possibilities around it. Right? The first one is the dravya, material things. The shloka started with material offerings to the celestial gods. So the material things that are offered. Now, what does that mean, actually? Let's look at it. It's like giving charity, food, clothes. We do that. Get associated with Red Cross and uh, or other things where we are actually serving doing jan seva around it and doing charity and what are we using there we are using dravya which is material matter matter is being used there so that is the first level of yagya furthermore second one is kaya where you start offering your body as well okay now it is also what is our body is also made up of matter, right? gross body. However, it becomes indirectly sentient because of the presence of the divinity soul within it, right? which in turn is energized by Paramatma himself. But when we start offering our body like a volunteer, this is considered a little higher yagya. The third one is Manumai, intelligence, buddhi. In this man and buddhi have clubbed it together. We will separate it further. What does it mean? Where you start offering your knowledge, mental skills to the service of the God, right? Um, in, to stimulate them on the path of spiritual knowledge. So even in this world, the skills are imparted, like coaches do that. However, it is done for the sake of money, not as a service sacrifice or for the sake of the God. So this is considered higher than offering your body. And finally, the soul atma, which basically in this shloka, has been called the topmost yagya, where you offer yourself to the Lord. I am servant of the Lord and everything I do is for his service. So it's just like Madhurre Bhav. When you get into Madhurre Bhav, the other automatically follow. However, yeah, so, so it's, it's the same principle. Right? So if, you are, if you're actually operating in a consciousness that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing for the God, so you are body, mind, speech, everything will be directed towards that, right? There's a beautiful shloka in Sanskrit. Kayana vacha man sendriyerva buddhyat manava prakrte sobhavat karomi yadyat sakalam parasme narayana eti samarpayami basically everything, the thought, speech, action, everything is directed towards you. God. That becomes the top level, topmost level and the aspirational state for all of us. So this, this is the progression of all the yagyas that we do. Right? Charity, it's purely limited to the material or the gross elements. 
as and as we continue to progress. So let's look at the progression aspect of it as well a little bit. So from left to right, we'll see the progression. We, we are moving from a dead matter. The gross body or dravya is a dead matter. They don't have life. That is what we offer to begin with. And then you go higher in terms of gaining transcendental knowledge as well as you continue to progress in the order of the sacrifice so from body to mind to intelligence intelligence is higher than mind okay now you would say what's the difference i'll talk a little bit about that and then obviously the soul to yagya soul is atma huti where you you give yourself it's like everything that you do will be a service for god you are not you're not uh, peace meeting it all right i will offer what I have, the dravya to God, then all right, I'll start offering my body, which which I consider to be my identity. So I'll start volunteering. Or then you say, no, I'll start doing manasi, seva, right? And then finally, you're, you offer yourself, soul to the God. That means everything is directed towards his service only. That is the aspirational state. Now between mind and buddhi also, obviously buddhi takes the higher precedence. Why would he take? Because that's the difference between being pun and being prapan. Tadvidhi pranipaten pari prashnena sevya. So then pranipaten. So in that case, the pun part is where you bow down in front of somebody. It might be through your mind. Okay, I am prostrate in somebody, in front of somebody. But have you truly become prapan, sharnagat, surrendered is the question. Even Arjun wasn't. He said, right, Shishya, Shishyaste uh, te Shadhimam Tom Prapannam. He said that in 2.7. So he said, Prapanna, that I am surrendered to your feet. However, he still did Kintu Parantu for a while until he finally said, now my ignorance is dispelled. So the buddhi aspect was still not convinced. That is why he was asking questions. When buddhi is convinced, then you don't ask questions. Then it's just about following the order, which he eventually did. So that is why it is said you start doing it with mind, but your buddhi might still not be convinced. You may might still be having that, but however, this makes sense, but this doesn't. So prapanna state is where you are fully sharnagat in your mind. That is a higher state. I'll give you an example, uh, an interesting uh, analogy around it. It's a beautiful uh, example to drive home this point. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that as well. And the other part was from body to mind. And Mansi, a part we've spoken about it, the Atma Huti is where you offer yourself, your very fiber and your very being, soul. And everything else, else has to follow them. And you have given it to, because your senses are determined, governed by the boss or, 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 the, or the controller of your senses is your mind. And the boss of your mind is your buddhi. And boss of our buddhi is soul, because it is eventually giving the energy even to buddhi to operate. And the boss of your soul is your super soul, which is Paramatma. He is obviously the super boss, right, for everything. So when the higher faculties is offered, the lower automatically, though, right? When, when people used to conquer the states, they would defeat the king. They don't have to go individually defeat each person, right? They will defeat the king and the kingdom automatically falls under them. So when you give your buddhi, your mind senses automatically have to follow. And when you offer your soul, understanding that you are truly a soul, then your every fiber of your being existence would be directed towards a sacrifice or the for the pleasure of God. That, that's how this hierarchy goes. Let's continue. Now, the demigods aspect is brought on. Now, Dravya part of it, which is the material things. What do we offer to who are celestial gods? Right? Let's do a quick recap. When we build a house or we build something, right? The, we need some infrastructure to be set up. Similarly, for this supervision of material function, the heating, watering, lighting of the universe, God Krishna says, okay, I have better things to do. So why don't you guys take charge of it? So heating, watering, you know, all that fun stuff, administrative task, he simply gives it, gives it to the demigods. Okay. And people who are interested in material benefits, we spoke about it, they approach demigods through Vedic, various Vedic rituals. And they are called Bahu Ishwaravadi. They, they consider multiple gods. 
okay because they are situated in um, limited knowledge that gods are different and they don't want to um, annoy any book god they have a very elaborate puja multiple gods in front of them and little bit of this 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 right and they'll equally distribute everything and uh, they will not even mingle plates okay in case the other god gets more or less so they are bahu ishwaravadi but what they are doing is through dravya material things right why they are doing it they are interested in material benefits okay they are called bahu ishwaravadi those are the people who go to devi devtas out of fear and out of you know uh, craving for some kind of a material boon and mannats and all that stuff fall into that category and they are bahu ishwaravadi okay so if hanuman ji doesn't give they don't mind going to some other god and they hedge their bets also that okay if we approach multiple gods the odds of things getting succeeded would increase okay so that is how it goes now the other aspect of it is that now if you look at it when worshiping a demigod for a certain benefits at least it indicates that people have subjected to a higher authority is it a bad thing no it's a good thing that's a first step you are at least admitting in your heart or to your intellect that there is a higher authority which we need to approach to get our self interest fulfilled so it it may not be a bad situation to get start otherwise you you don't have any basis or anything right you think i am the boss for everything so it's it may not be it's it could be a good gateway or starting point and that is why even god understood that and he has given people some kind of a basis to work with all right you need boons that might be a starting point for you in due course of time you will get the big picture and then you will progress so he's given you that freedom to do this and you get this kind of a deal and to save the journal people from atheism that they become atheist completely um there is a recommendation for worshiping different types of so if you look at our vedic scriptures 80% of it is karm kand even though the underlying thing is to develop love and affection for god but god has given you that basis as well so at least people are not becoming a theist although this way of conditional worship that only if this thing happens then i'll do this eventually will lead to atheism but um, at least people are subjecting to a higher authority which is a good sign they are not thinking themselves to be the center of the universe some somebody who controls everything so they think some higher power some supernatural power some divine power can do something good for us which is a good starting point at least that acknowledgement is there right and then the next step is see god acknowledgement or div- divinity acknowledgement is the first step the next step is god fearing all right i'm god fearing right people say we are god fearing people and the third step is god loving that happens in due course of time when you, as as you start getting more and more understanding about this topic or about god himself let's continue to build on this now if you look at it this is how you perform yagyas right yeah dravyam now in this world there are baddh jeev nitya baddh which is the vips wips that we are right wips work in progress which are nitya baddh and people who want material enjoyment right that is a symptom of nitya baddh people they are called wips some people read it as vvips okay but it is actually wip work in progress we are not special okay until we become so they go to demigods um and offer yagya to them and there are many demigods they have speciality in terms of the boons they give okay they, they give boons for sure if you meet their criteria now like for health people go to the sun god they do that um, uh mantras go to sun god and and basically for health they go for beauty they go to gandharvas and there's an interesting joke pamit ji was telling that the uh, so yavan mad that people have when they are 14 or 16 they think they are the center of the universe and most good looking in the world so there was this girl who worshiped gandharva okay so after a lot of worship this gandharva appeared in front of her so he said ask me for a boon and then she started thinking 
so just to help her out he said all right let me make you more beautiful okay and she gave him a tight slap what do you mean right so you think i'm not beautiful already so gandharva was like zapped so the point is yavan mad is there it is one of the intoxications we all suffer with at a young age if you go to somebody very pe- people at that age are sorted out who know what is the big picture around life and they will think otherwise they think the world is at their feet they will not listen to anybody and it takes a time for somebody it may take 25 years somebody 35 somebody even 85 is not enough that really depends but at that age doesn't help and anyways getting back to the topic and then for these are all dravya basically we are asking for material boons and we are invoking uh, the devi devatas celestial gods around it for money we go to lakshmi ji although lakshmi ji is not celestial god okay so don't get me wrong lakshmi ji is narayan's wife so if we worship narayan lakshmi will anyway come right but we simply worship lakshmi ji on diwali and and hope that she is going to come and fill our coffers with money right nobody nobody uh, everybody plays safe with lakshmi ji right? on diwali um and then gamblers they play also they think they they are going to have a lot of luck because lakshmi ji is going to be on their side and lakshmi ji is narayan ji's wife so if you go to narayan ji lakshmi will automatically serve you let me mix that point and directly go to lakshmi ji only and then for husbands to lord shiva or mother parvati and some people go to hanuman ji as well by the way so um these are all basically in the material realm we ask for material boons mother parvati is known right there was a katyani vrat i think mother sita had also done to get a good work so those traditions are there right and we f- selectively pick that only um and and then uh, basically ask for material boons which is we are asking for something material using material offerings as well around that right there are vidhis around performing all these worships worships and mantras as well now let's try to consolidate this whole thing now depending upon the desires they would like people go to different demigods but at least they understand i am not the controller or the proprietor of material things here in the world for my sense gratification which is subjecting to a higher authority which is good at least you are thinking there is somebody higher than you who is capable of giving something to you right which you are not capable of otherwise procuring it all by yourself so bigger this is the point we and demigods they are powerful living entities appointed by supreme lord for the maintenance and supervision of material functions like we spoke about and it is quite possible we have been demigods as well in one of our previous lifetimes we have lived in finite times and maharaj ji says you have been to all the yonis including indra demigod and what not all the way up to brahma lok so we have been through all these roles and it is a good possibility we have become indra varun and everything and those who are interested in material benefits they worship demigods um, we said they are bahu ishwarwadi they 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 worship too many gods okay that is the first thing that when you progress start progressing spiritually we need to do consolidation around it okay a, a pure devotee understands this is the same lord my same lord in a different form today they don't get confused right it's like jaya bachchan asking amita bachchan hey i married a guy and then you became cooly and then don and now you are fighting those thugs whom did i marry does she get confused she doesn't so similarly a devotee doesn't get confused today you know you become ganesha and now shiva and no he understands this is the same lord in different forms and even when they worship for like sun god for help they consider it's it's your manifestation only they understand the big picture at the back of their mind and they don't get confused and this question never comes in their mind that if i do to ram you know krishna will feel upset and if i do to krishna shiva will feel upset or if i do to shiva what happens i used to do durga ma they don't get confused in that they simply understand my ishta dev it's just a different manifestation of the true thing right and they go with the focus and annatya is needed because then you start building connect with the form that is most appealing to you that you naturally associate with and that ananyata would help you develop that personal relationship deepen it and it's the same entity so that helps but people who don't understand they keep on hedging their bets with demigods and keep on putting multiple things you know if this god doesn't help maybe other one would right that is not a correct understanding essentially 
and so yeah i think you've spoken about it so basically our scriptures are giving us some kind of a basis not everybody is interested in understanding the higher principles they are interested in making their life comfortable in the jail right we spoke about that concept as well and god said all right that's fine you keep on making your life comfortable in the jail the day you are convinced this you need to actually get out of the jail then i'll lead you to guru and we we will talk after that so and he has given you enough things to play around in this conditioned jail uh, you know this jail for the conditioned souls so that you keep at least subjecting to a higher authority and bringing in some kind of a discipline in your life people do that this tyohar not tyohar this vrat that vrat santoshi mata this mata that thing shani shani dev ji this at least it's bringing in some kind of a discipline routine and the 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 fear or whatever we may want to call it is bringing in something better than otherwise just thinking that i am the only person in this world and i don't need to subject to any authority so it is it is better at least making some kind of a progress in some form or manner but people who are start understanding the principle they shed all these things and start progressing really building their connection to their ishta dev and understanding the deeper principles behind devotion acquiring proper tattva gyan and then start making spiritual progress that is how this goes now all that we have spoken about so far it's dravya part of it only okay let's do that we haven't so a quick discussion around this now we know right in every house you all would have done that by the way this arti is not even in any scriptures om jay jagdish hare right we all do that tan man dhan sab tera kya lage mera we all do that and say if guru ji or bhagwan comes and say hey you know what whatever you have in your house put it in the truck and send it to me are we really willing to do that now my question is let's have a quick discussion before we look at another which is the highest and lowest yagya from below and why so when i say yagya in the form of sacrifice tan man or dhan yes anybody who wants to go and explain sandhya you can ask yourself invite yourself to begin with and go ahead <laughs> yeah I, uh, okay uh, i think uh, so uh, dhan is the lowest then tan and then man man is the highest among these three okay and why so uh, i am finding it hard to explain but most i think it's about the value associated with that thing the true value what is it that uh, can get connected can help you get connected with god more easily um, yeah all right yes good we'll come back to that couple of other people have raised your hand so it's would like to hear from you as well pail ji radhe radhe yes radhe radhe so uh, i feel that uh, uh, if say for example somebody is not well correct and uh, so uh, it's like uh, i mean uh, we have three options tan man and dhan so i i feel that tan is the uh, Uh, is the uh, first thing which uh, we can use uh, uh, for uh, offering our services to god uh, followed by dhan if you have whatever uh, dhan uh, if you want to do some seva with the uh, uh, material things then uh, you can uh, uh, use dhan and uh, the uh, the lastly is man so uh, i i am not been able to actually uh, express it but uh, i think tan man dhan so tan man dhan yes i i i i i said wrongly it is tan man and dhan all right you said tan man and dhan okay all right game on i think we are going to have a nice debate today <laughs> thank you bye thank you bye ji uh, nitin ji radhe 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 namaskar everybody namaskar sir uh, according to me sir the highest must be the man because whatever i do it should be manasic then only it will come into my action then tan and of course to do some yagya i need to have a dhan so if i am doing it something with with my uh, full mind i think the prakruti will align all the things together 
and the things will happen automatically it will fall aligned so if i ha- want to do, do any kind of a seva or any yagya bhav sacrifice to anybody i should have that thought in my mind first that is very very important automatically physical actions will part form of it that will all absolutely my tan that is my sharir and to do certain things yes we require dhan dhan may not be in the form of money but it can be a material things which is utilized in order to do that particular sacrifice so my order is man then of uh, uh, to do because only mind can't do anything it needs a physical form therefore we need tan and when we are into this material world and when we you, you need to do certain things in material world we need to have a material form only that in the form of dhan like that i feel beautiful very nice Nitin thank ji. you sir wonderful thank you great points one more hand and then we continue yes pallavi ji radhe radhe hi radhe radhe good evening everyone can you hear me yes yes, yes. yeah so i totally agree with nitin ji so first will be uh, the lowest i'll give dhan and then uh, tan and then man so dhan is because dhan is lowest because material offering to get material blessing and highest will be man because to if we surrender man that is only to for the for for god like you know we are surrendering to god great point pallavi ji i'm glad i didn't put a fourth option tan man dhan and the fourth option was none <laughs> So, Ashutosh ji has also raised his hand. Yes, Ashutosh ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Ashutosh ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Actually, I like to put on an analogy with that that when we in saying is also there. If wealth is lost, then nothing is lost. If health is lost, then something is lost. And if character is lost, then everything is lost. So, if you character with like man, then it, the atom really comes in play like that. Yes, wonderful. it's a very uh, saying we used to read in school for sure yeah wealth is considered nimna kaksha very basic stuff that you can start parting with okay we think it it's a big thing uh, i had told right like in kalyuga the biggest problem not problem but the biggest asakti in kalyu people have is to part with their wealth so when brahma ji was asked i've spoken about it before as well right to give injunctions to people in celestial abodes people in mrityulok and people in nether planets but uh, the the hellish abodes what would be the key injunction for that and he said the 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 and he left so now the this is not the the okay it is hindi the so the left meant for um uh, for uh, the celestial abode it was dam dam means um restrain your senses they have such possibilities of pleasure that they are not able to restrain their senses so daman do daman of that they they can just have like so many pleasures unbridled too many things so they get intoxicated with that so they are daman okay you have gotten this temporarily just as a merit of your you know good deeds that you did in mrityu lok this will be gone after a while but your sanskars will remain right so daman and then for the hellish abode he said daya those people are so you know criminal minded they they kill each other and subject each other to misery for the you know just for the sake of their pleasure so he said daya have compassion on each other and for mrityu lok people he said dan because people that is the first thing uh, they find very you know hard to part with so anyway the point here in from a scriptural standpoint dhan is at the lowest level because it is dravya sentient matter okay when we say kya lage mera it's actually a fact so when we offer it god doesn't need it it's just like a kid going to a father and saying dad can you give me 20 rupees and he takes 20 rupees from his father and gives him a gift on his birthday right because that is essentially what our offering to god is he doesn't need it all belongs to him only So anyway, dhan. Now some people say I have offered my man, so I don't need to. But the point is, if you have offered your man, everything else will follow. So the sequence as it goes is dhan, then tan, and then man, because man is the highest thing. If you started or start to offer your man, rest will follow automatically. 
even beyond man is your soul but let's say you consider yourself to be your man man is if we start engaging our man then that is what is needed and on the contrary in the yagya if your man is not there and you only using dravya will not get the effect yes jyoti you had a question radhe radhe jyoti ji radhe radhe sandhya ji radhe radhe nitin ji so radhe i radhe. don't have any question it's just a thought so i i i'm getting this feeling so and the feeling is i'm getting this feeling in past couple of days what if we offer ourselves completely to god not as a tan man or dhan just just completely just uh, offer yourself as a person as a human being to god that is called atmahuti it is a very very advanced stage but then when we say we have offered ourselves to god it's it's not like a garland that hey god i have offered it to you Mm-hmm. right so it is a it is like you have gotten purified to an extent that every action every thought is directed towards god now you have reached that stage that's it then there is nothing bigger than that you have reached the state of surrender god will bestow you with divine senses and you are a dandi at that point atmahuti is the highest level of yagya if you can do that and that is why we are reading bhagavad gita or trying to train our mind through practices such as sadhana karam yoga and all so that we can reach a state of that perfect surrender which is atmahuti that you are talking about it's a very advanced stage we have to work towards it so it okay. cannot happen that we wake up one day and i said god <laughs> i am in a mood to do atmahuti so here here you go i wish it was as simple but yes your point jyoti just to answer that question mm-hmm. you, i think that is the highest level of sacrifice okay okay thank you nitin ji so, and you offer yourself to god that is the highest level of sacrifice so yes man as man is takes the highest you know order in that case and there's a joke of uh, swami ji tells uh, there used to be a miser guy super miser guy and he came to know about mansi bhakti he said that's very cool you know i don't have to spend even a dime and i can do all the puja in my mind only and he started doing that and he didn't even have to buy you know those hars expensive hars and everything and every day in his mind he will get the most exotic of jewelry and put it at god's feet and started doing that seva and he reached a point where he had perfected that manasi bhakti to an extent that he would just do it and he could simulate it to perfection every day and one day he decided to make some kheer for god for bhog and he made a kheer he was stirring that kheer and he said okay i need to put some saffron in it as well and then he got a dabbi of saffron and he just put it there and he put it there the entire saffron fell into it now he was miser that was his tendency so he said oh my god what happened entire saffron then he started taking one saffron out and another saffron out in his dhyan only so krishna said he just came he said all right he's done his bhakti to an extent that okay let me he holds his hand he said you can juice makhi juice first of all you are doing it in your mind and then also you are worried about this saffron anyways that was his way of telling him but he gave him his darshan so the point is mansi bhakti is the topmost when you start offering your mind you cannot offer anything more than that my man and buddhi is krishna asked arjun also to offer to him what can we offer when we say surrender what do we surrender this body this is anyway a rented property we have anyway have to leave one day right it is all material can we offer our senses nothing they are inert in themselves right when somebody passes away it's still lying there that body senses everything is lying there then what can we offer the only thing that we can offer to god is our mind and our buddhi my mind and buddhi if we offer that to god that means we are perfected our surrender so mind is the topmost yagya the whole objective of spirituality is to take ourselves to the point where our mind is engaged and not just our dravya is senses alone right and when our mind starts getting we are getting closer to that perfect state of atmahuti yashudi you had a question na radhe radhe shuti ji radhe radhe shuti ha uh, uh, yeah radhe radhe nitya yeah so uh, so what's the order tan dhan and man dhan, dhan is the first see when yes. you start building detachment to this world dhan is the first thing you'll have to conquer in your head okay that will be the first mm-hmm. thing if you start doing that obviously something will change then will come tan 
it can have an overlap there as well, right? It's like a mixture of all that stuff. But dhan is good, right? Dhan That's is what good. I was thinking, like, because, uh, like, for some people, uh, doing service is easier than parting with their dhan. True. Very like true. they'll go and you know just serve but giving away the money is a little more difficult and you know, they would want understood. to hold on to the money yeah understood it is understood however if we have to get to atmahuti right you cannot say through man i'll jump to atmahuti the tan and dhan has to follow as well right so yeah. that is considered the insentient gross thing which is not even carrying anything so that has to happen as well and the order it goes typically is dhan Tan, man, and then Atmahuti will happen. You cannot say if through man I will do service and then I will do Atmahuti. No, your stash is still there. You have not been able to give your time, your body, right? For whatever reason. And you have definitely not been able to part with something very dear to you, which is money. So it cannot happen. Atmahuti stage cannot come just like that. But typically in, a, in anybody's life, it's a combination of all three that happens, continues to evolve. right? And within that, the grading in terms of drug, the, the grading of the yajna is the dhan one is considered the lowest one because if you're offering dhan, let's say a lot of businessmen, they go and put big, big hars in Vaishnu Devi and put it their feet, right? But their money is somewhere else. That doesn't count for anything because dhan is anyway the lowest category. What are you going to give to God? Yeah, man, I think, yeah, is the highest one because that's the most difficult. Like, every that's moment, if you think of God, that is the most difficult thing because yeah, so, you know, there are so many other things. Yeah. True. And that is a practice. So that is why Karam Yoga practice is there, right? See, the world does not demand your mind. Has a, has your boss or your family been said, I need your mind? You are not mentally. I need your mind. Nobody demands. They just want your work to be done. As long as you are getting the work done at home or at office, nobody will complain. So God says, you continue doing your work. Give your mind to me. That is Karam Yoga. We have a problem giving something as subtle as our mind to God also. God says you continue doing. I'm not asking you to stop working. Do, do it to the best of your ability. Just give your mind to me. And then that will lead you to Atma Huti state. That is where God wants to take us because he wants to give us our true inheritance when we are perfectly. Because until we, why won't we do Atma Huti? Because we are not convinced that, you know, my self-interest that I've been seeking since time immemorial will be served by God only. We are not convinced. That is why we cannot reach that stage until we are firmly convinced about that. Now, I'll give you one more example of, uh, anyway, we spoke about this. This is an interesting one. When we are doing seva or we are engaging in any kind of a yajna, sacrifice, right? It's an interesting one as well. I wanted to have a bit of a discussion on this because it's an important concept as we start progressing on the path of spirituality, you know, some of the things that we got to be mindful about as well. So here is a Guruji, right? And here are his two disciples. Okay. And the two disciples says, Guruji, we want to serve you by pressing your feet today. Okay. Charan Sevan is considered very high. Right? Even God's lotus feet and all that stuff, it is said in our scriptures as well. So they wanted to do his chair. He said, yeah, go ahead. He's, he was resting, so he went ahead. So each one of them took a feet each. Okay, And they started pressing it and massaging it nicely. So Guruji was lying down and they, they were started. They, one of them, each one of them picked the feet and started doing that seva. And in the course of doing that, you know, once disciples feet touched the other one and the other one said oh you touched my feet and he put the feet back at him and then this one again put the feet back at him and this one they just started banging the feet against each other because they didn't like what happened you know from the other one and this is what they say how dare you hit my foot and this started happening now what kind of a yajna these sacrifice these disciples are doing if this starts happening Yes. They are doing with thun, right? They are doing with thun. Just... True, tan. they are doing with thun. So, Payalji, getting back to your question, they are doing with thun. But where is their man? <clears throat> yeah, their man, okay, their man is self-centered. They want their satisfaction. They want it to be the way they want. 
And where is their buddhi? Buddhi is buddhi. obviously having an erroneous it's knowledge. Also... Yeah, so go ahead, please. Finish your thought. Yeah, buddhi is also like um, like that ego, that self, self-happiness. So obviously it comes under worldly, completely materialistic. Right, so this is a very important concept in the world of seva. We, that is also yagya you are doing. What we are doing right now is also yagya, by the way. Krishna says when we read Bhagavad Gita, it is called intellectual sacrifice because we are putting faith in what God said. So when you do that with with uh, with uh, faith and contemplate upon it, you get God's grace because you are actually thinking about what God said, right? He said it for a purpose and you are spending time for that. It is intellectual sacrifice. So in this way, when we approach anything, yes, Raghu, you wanted to add something? I think the essence of seva is where the, uh, we provide, we do things which gives happiness to the Swami. Yeah? So that is the essence. But here they are trying to like <clears throat> probably not do that in the correct way, but they are self-seeking. True. The, so, so what happens after that? The Guruji wakes up, he said, guys, what are you up to? You know, They were banging feet, he was lying down. <laughs> So yeah, they're they're doing it with the tan seva, but their man, man is still not there yet. They are doing it for their own sake. So even we have so many deep layers of selfishness that unless we come in contact with the perfect guru, those layers will not be removed. We don't. We are not even aware to what lever our selfishness is so deeply ingrained in us. But in this case, these guys are doing their best. But the moment some barrier came, you know, that thing came out and they lost the big picture over whom are they doing it for end of the day. And they're fighting my, my thing and your thing kind of a deal. And it happens. So you can always remember this story. Okay. These situations will come in your life time and again. And then remind this story. Okay. I'm holding Guru's one feet. Okay. The other person that I'm working with is holding another feet. Do we really need to have this? What will Guruji feel? Okay, when we are doing it, essentially they belong to them only. And this situation will come time and again and again. So just etch it in your memory. You'll have to refresh it. And despite knowing it, still it will haunt you. So just keep reminding this story. Tell to you. Yes, Payalji, go ahead. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe, Payalji. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, so what I meant to say is... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, understood. That part. Yeah. If somebody's sick, right? Yeah. Uh, sick. And uh, other thing is, say, for example, somebody is new on this path, correct? So uh, I heard in one of the Swamiji's uh, lecture that at least start going to the satsang. So if we are physically uh, going uh, there, and then ultimately your mind will get attached. So from that perspective, I thought that, uh, you know, physically, let us start at least uh, practicing. And then uh, ultimately, I'll, our uh, mind will get attached to uh, the God. So to start with, uh, that's why I, uh, I uh, selected True. the option. Uh, yes. No, that's, that's, that's a great point you said. Yes, we start attaching your mind and other things will start following. So there is no sequence. It's not it's saying you first do this and then do this and then do this. You can start at any level. But in terms of the offering to God, which will get more, more credit, so to say, wealth doesn't matter too much, right? God doesn't need. Kuber is at his disposal. Lakshmi is Narayan's wife. So wealth is like the bare minimum, like the least significance. When you start offering your body, now you're getting close to your mind. So your mind has to be convinced to a certain level for you to even volunteer. So God says, now we are talking. And when you start offering your mind, say, yes, now you're getting there. You start offering your buddhi also, gradually. That is the whole process. of If you have surrendered your buddhi, you are surrendered. We are not surrendered because our buddhi is not convinced. We have started the process of surrender by offering our time, services, you know, our body, um, doing, doing the seva, volunteer work. That means we are on the path now. But we, the day we will be surrendered, Buddhi will automatically will be Sharanagat at that point. There will not be any Kintu Parantu, we are a done deal. Immediately there will not be a delay. The, the day our Buddhi is surrendered, Sharanagat, immediately the grace will come in. You know, Guru will grace us, Guru will manifest and he will give us Premanant. 
so that is the whole process so that is the topmost thing so from god's angle yes but to your point yes we can start at any level we start engaging our mind obviously we'll feel like doing volunteer work obviously we'll feel like you know uh, associating with the cause and you know purifying our wealth all that will follow so that's a great point thank you panji yes sandhya ji yeah i i just wanted to add to what pyal ji said i mean one thing is that we subtly do not even know what are the things we are attached with so from that perspective it is important to uh, do sacrifice of those things like for example money we may think okay we'll just directly uh, give uh, our man which is you know highest but at times we are subtly attached to these little little things and it is important to give them and get detached and then you know eventually give uh, your man and mind so and that is another reason I, the other day was saying when you come in contact with the true saint they will confront your secret stash okay because they know your secret stash they will start confronting it right from day one so that you start removing those small small impediments and keep progressing because we are not aware of our secret stash our buddhi will give us enough justifications very nicely sugar coated justifications around why you're doing it but guru will start confronting it slowly gradually but surely i've seen that happen to me okay that's why i'm telling you extreme experience um both me and my wife we've experienced it how he you know he's chiseled us step by step by step and that process continues so you know it and then when you start getting into that relationship and you start understanding it you know which nugget to hang on to it like every time you meet you know you you pick that nugget and start working on it and then you see something has changed and then you pick the next nugget and that is how the process goes so this whole thing has to eventually lead us to the highest level of yagya which is offering your atmahuti and atmahuti is the highest stage and uh, and uh, we are a dandi at that point so if jyoti you wake up and you feel like doing atma it can happen in a second by the way you never know when our intellect takes a turn completely and say all right i'm done i'm fully shada gat to you god it can happen it's a game of the mind right possibly it can happen maharaj ji says even if it happens one second before your death you are a dead leaf so that means there is a possibility right god is there so yeah that's the whole idea so yagya we said the the lowest level is dravya you use and for dravya things material things when you go to celestial abodes asking this that that is fine but it's not truly adding to your spiritual growth okay you are still just taking turns about turns here and there in this conditioned state and it's truly not taking taking you any further right so rather than that let's focus on how we can uplift ourselves spiritually because this human life is so precious and do ourselves a favor and then your mind will say no you know what if my life becomes comfortable only this problem goes away then i'll do it again it will play tricks okay it will never be comfortable so it's not about waiting for the rain to abate and go away it's about getting out in the rain and dancing that is the whole idea rain will always be there in some form or manner yes aarti ji radhe radhe aarti ji radhe radhe uh, great session will this session be available online all sessions are available online only thing is you have to keep an eye out for it because typically they are available after a week so if you look at it all the sessions that we have done they are getting uploaded they get uploaded after a week so every session is available you just look at the date and then uh, i put the shloka number i've started doing that so that it's easy to to figure it out and then put a relevant topic around it right for example today's topic could be that what is the topmost yagya i may name it like that with 4.25 and you can look it up in youtube next week and you'll find it and i send out a note also if you have joined the portal um you i upload it there so that you can you can check it out there as well okay all right any other questions any uh, you can do the announcements if you yeah, want yeah that's what i yeah i was just about to say that we have opportunity for all the participants to also participate in yagya seva yagya yeah. <laughs> so uh i'll just quickly make announcements uh, so we have uh, fabulous programs coming up at temple 
first of all we have janmashtami celebrations coming up uh, which will start all the way from 6th august uh, weekends we'll have uh, exhibition exhibits or maybe i can also share the slide right sure sure go ahead where is it so seva is a great way to start performing small small yagyas even if it's 5 10 minutes of day trust me it is contagious more contagious than corona virus if you start doing it it will grow on you and you say i need more of it but start small pick it up don't delay it for that perfect opportunity it will never come it will pass you by okay so we have the janmas janmashtami festival coming up um where we have uh, special exhibitions um art and crafts um and uh, darling of prindavan uh, uh, is the theme and we'll have movies and uh, very beautiful exhibits to state and uh, we'll have these going on uh, during the weekends from august 6th august 12th 13th and then 18th to 21st we'll have this grand celebration going on with swami ji also over here so people who are in dallas uh, i think it's an opportunity that you wouldn't want to miss at all and otherwise online also on 20th and 21st of august we'll have these events uh, Uh, online as well so please make use of that and for the same we have volunteering opportunity so i have shared the link uh, where you can just fill in your details i'll reshare it and uh, i think it's an opportunity for you to also participate in yagya so do that we have uh, various task which could be done remotely so it will be wonderful if you can help and do the seva um then we have uh, it's not here so i'll just describe we have the uh, life transformation program with swami ji uh, from august uh, 20th to 26th that's about signs of happiness so whoever can come here uh, to dallas and can make use of that opportunity it will be amazing we'll be really happy to host <laughs> uh and yes after that we have in september the retreat the spiritual retreat uh in the weekend the labor day weekend so september 3rd to september 5th um yeah that is also something for which we have the last i think date for early bird today so uh, if you want to register for it at a relatively uh, reduced price so today is the last date for that so yeah you still have about uh... One hour and fifty-six minutes to go. Okay, for that. So, yes, I think that's main thing. And uh, please check the links in the chat, and I will repost the volunteering link here and feedback tracker. So that's there. Yes, please do fill it out as well. All right. Any other questions? Are they good? Arti ji has raised hand. Arti ji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Arti ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, uh, may be a naive question, but uh, why didn't you introduce action also in the yagya? Because we had been doing that, जो भी कर्म करो वो ऐसे अर्पण बुद्धि से करो. So wouldn't it also come as an offering? Action, yeah, basically, yeah, I didn't mix that topic with this one. But end of the day, we have to perform action, right? No matter what we are doing, so action will be there. But the key. key to the action is also where your mind is now if you are doing that action here we are talking purely about yagya right so this this means either you are doing that action uh, as a service to celestial gods for some some kind of a material benefit or you are doing that action as a service to god directly the regular action that we do day to day life it is related to gratification of our senses mostly it's not a yagya part that we are talking about So since the topic was yagya, action will be there. The intent could either be some material boons for celest from celestial gods, or it could be um, your offering or doing it for the pleasure of God directly. So action will be there regardless of what we are doing. I hope I didn't confuse you. Or I did. Um, Sham Ji is also there. You can. put it in the note as well if there is a follow up question on that action will be there regardless you have to perform action even during yagya as well right you have to pick the oblation and put it there but why you are doing it is the key there 
So action will be there regardless, but it is centered around the topic of yagya and not karam at this point. Even though yagya is also karam. Yes, Shyamji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Shyamji. Please yeah. go ahead. Uh, Radhe, Radhe Radhe. I am here to talk about my experience, not about Dallas and the Vashmi celebrations. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as you said that Bhavi Shirivadi, I was the same in the same uh, course told you also. I used to worship Lord Shiva, Ma Durga, and uh, Anubhaji. And for me, Krishna was like you know, somebody who is just part of the celestial abodes and he's there. And they will pay heed to him. But since I have joined the classes and all, thanks to you, that my Jitna Mes Vaj Pahayo, Jitna Mini Akal Kaam Aari hai. Everything has played out now. And my only uh, Guru uh, or my Bhagavan, Ish Devis, Radha Krishna, and nobody else. And I don't even look at other gods. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's what has changed for me now. Earlier, Krishna was for me nobody. And now he's now for me, he is everybody. He is the only one for me. I guess I'm on the right, right track, right path now. And all thanks to you, Jan Bhai. Radhe, Radhe. So I'm glad we, we, we introduced you to your name only. Okay, so. It's not a providence for sure, but this is how you look at it. Even when you look at Shiv and Ram, you you yeah. see your Ishtadev in them. That this is your form only, God. But I would rather prefer to see you in the flute kind of a form. Okay. Yeah. So th that is the sentiment a devotee has. They don't differentiate. They just look at their Ishtadev in all those. As opposed to, no, no, I don't have anything to do with you. No, they are also the same. It's just in a different mood of the same father. That's all. Yeah, true. As, as we, uh, we all have Kul Devi, we, we had no Kul Devi because as far as I know, or we did not know. Other day, my uh, daughter was asking me, who's a Kul Devi? So I said, Radha Rani. That's how it is. So uh, whatever it goes, it's my mind is centered around this, this, this only. I can't even think anybody, anybody, anything else nowadays. That's the power of, I guess, Gita, the power of knowledge, the power of intellect, yeah. whatever you call it. I'm just tuned to this, to this part now. Beautiful. Yeah. And Radharani would have, I'm sure, she would have gone to Krishna and said, you know what, I've got another job description now, I have to become Kuldevi of Shyamji as well. So I think she'll be more than happy to be that. So. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Okay, great. I see, any more hands or we are good? Lakshmi ji. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe, Lakshmi ji. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe. Just I want to share my uh, ongoing experience. Like before I used to uh, do puja, like puja means like lighting the lamp and my mind will be what is on a stove, what is my sister's daughter doing, if she's getting ready, all that of stuff. But I used to chant the mantras and come out. But after joining this platform, I thought, so that's not the thing. So when I, now what I'm doing, if there's no time to have a pleasant mind and do puja, I just lamp and do namaskar and come out. And after coming from my work, I sit for 10 to 15 minutes and chant the mantra and come out. So this is the chain I'm finding nowadays. So that's just, I want to share that. Beautiful, very nice. And Maharaj used to say that uh, the dhyan, right? Thinking about the form of, is the pran of any sadhana. So if we can remember God in whatever form we want, murtis are also different types, right? You have bronze and then marble and then paintings and all. But he, he emphasized on manumai. You make it from your mind. Feel free to form it the way you wish. Because when God when will perfect our devotion, he is anyway going to give us darshan. Until then, we just have to form an image in our mind only. And that is very important. That will help, help us build that relationship. And it's very purifying. Because when we put in an effort to think about God, God knows they cannot think through this material mind. But we get the credit and it starts purifying our mind. That is how powerful it is. Very nice, Lakshmi ji. Anybody else then? I think we can wrap up early today. So, yes, Sam ji. Sam ji. Yeah. <laughs> Radhi, Radhi. Radhi. Yeah. Right, so, Nitin ji, we have JK Yoga India, JK Yoga Academy and CIC. Now, um, uh, we have a new temple in California. Are we going to have a new segment also? It's a very interesting question you asked. So, Meenu ji, if you may want to answer that question, I'll put you in a spot and in spot. Yeah, actually, too many websites. Websites are increasing. See, Online the, sessions are increasing. The more, the merrier, right? It's a, it's a good problem to have, I would say. You have options, choices.
too many choices, right? See, Bhagavad Gita, the pace at which I'm going, people will say, don't know, you know, this guy will ever complete or not. But the good thing is we have so many sessions. If you are in a hurry, you join chapter 7. If you are in even more hurry, you join chapter 10. If you are in super hurry, directly join a chapter, chapter 18. <laughs> so, the more is better, right? You can get the yeah, range and depth both. Uh, <laughs> Everything that. is good, but the gems are rare. <laughs> there are only few gems. <laughs> no, no. Uh, like crown jewels. Yeah, so I think the it's a problem of plenty, I would say. I won't even say it problem. It's a, it's a solution of plenty. So, you pick and choose. And uh, I would say... Uh, Pick and choose in the manner that that you can absorb. Okay. Sometimes we start feeling FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, that is also you have to strike a balance because when it comes to transforming ourselves, one piece of knowledge is good enough. Right. One shloka contemplated enough is good enough, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, the more knowledge we can acquire and whatever works for us is how I would see. But you pick and choose what, what you think. Maybe satsang from here and this session from there, that is your choice. So you continue experimenting around and where you feel the most connect, you continue doing that. But more specifically, your question, I think Minuji can answer that if they are going to have their online offerings as well. So I don't know about that right now. If she has not raised her hand, then that means uh, I'll have to check with her separately on this. But uh, if it happens, I think it will be even better. Yeah, I guess Minuji is not there in the. Minuji is not there. Okay, no worries. Yeah, I'll... yeah please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, like all the announcements are for a uh, US people. Like, what about people who are sitting here in India? When are we going to have the retreat programs and uh, transformation programs by Swamiji over Actually, here so that we can also get benefit? Swamiji does yes. in India. So we have scheduled yeah, that. Yeah, the that schedule is out actually. Uh, the India's. I, okay, if you can please share it with us so that uh, because I was referring to it yesterday, uh, it was not up, updated. So if you can just. Ashutosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have very active volunteer from uh, India, Ashutosh. He's going yeah. to, I think, tell us more. He tracks Swamiji's coordinates minute by minute in India. Okay? <laughs> so he'll give you all the details. Yeah. Please, Ashutoshi, if you can uh, share with us as well. Papaji, you have not had a chance to yes. speak to Swami. Not, not yet. Not yet, I, I have a feeling you will very soon. So. SMX is also another platform. SMX is another yes. platform. Speak with him in person. And uh, I, I'm sure um, you'll get a chance very soon. So. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> He, okay. I'm sure he, he would pick up your devotional sentiments just like that. Just like that. I'm just waiting for that, that, uh, that day to come. It'll, <laughs> that happen, day to it'll happen very soon, I'm sure. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Ashutosh Ji, you can... Yes, Radhe Radhe. Uh, yes, Nitin Ji, there are three dates are announced with the three program. That is from 13 to 16 October. That is in Banara Ashram. That century year is celebration of Maharaj Ji. And after that, that Puri Sivar is already announced 18 to 22nd November in Jagannath Puri. And after that, 25th to 31 December, like family camp is there in Arkati, the last year also, something like that they do in Banara Ashram. So three dates are already announced, other dates are in the way. There you go. I'll... Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Pasha. Wonderful. Thank you, Ashutoshi. All right, the last one. We can complete it on time today. Never on time, but earlier, relatively easier earlier today. So last one, Samji, from you. Yes, Samji. Radhe, Radhe, I please. have just yeah, I have just forwarded in CIC group the dates flyer, Indian dates flyer. So you can check them. Wonderful. Great. Okay. I think we can do our closing prayers then. And tomorrow we'll continue um, our engaging discussion around this. And uh, thank you again for a very engaging session and for the opportunity like always we can do our closing prayers now yes Payal ji is quick yes. enough <laughs> all right surinder ji i don't see him today so no competition whatsoever for you Payal ji today all right please go ahead radhe, radhe. Om Sarve 
सर्वे सन्त निरामे भद्रा पश्य कशिदुखागे ओं शांति 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 राधे राधे Radhe Radhe, thank you so much, Panji, and thank you everybody. Have a wonderful day, great rest of your evening, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Yes, thank you everyone. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe.